Hello everybody, this is Mr. Record, broadcasting from Avon High School. We're going to talk a little bit about curve sketching. We're in section 3.6 of the Larson 9th edition. We're just about ready to embark on some pretty heavy calculus analysis where we will actually sketch the graph of a function from start to finish by using all of the ideas that we've learned about with limits and first derivatives and second derivatives. But before we do that, we have one other uh, item that uh, typically would be a review from uh, perhaps a pre-calculus class. Uh, and that is the idea of the oblique or slant asymptote. You're probably all very familiar with the vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes. But this guy is just a little bit different. And it says oftentimes the graph of rational functions may display a different type of asymptote called oblique or slant. You can think of that as diagonal. It's a diagonal line that serves as a barrier guiding the end behavior of the function. And if you consider this particular function, f of x, uh, I've, give, I've given you a sketch of the graph over to the right, which might give you a little bit of insight into where this oblique asymptote would occur. But I'm going to show you algebraically how to find it, and we'll even graph it um, on the TI Inspire to get a little bit better look at it. I want you to keep in mind, though, that this particular function does look like it has a uh, vertical asymptote as well. I believe it occurs at x equal 1. But that is immaterial. Uh, these functions quite often might have a vertical asymptote. And if they do, um, you know, that is a completely separate idea from the diagonal asymptote. Now, the idea of having a horizontal asymptote and a, and a diagonal asymptote is a different story that we'll talk about in a second. So if we go ahead and take a look at this particular problem, we will investigate the slant asymptote. And I'd like you to take a very good look at what's underlined here, because this is very important. We must take note that only rational functions whose degree of its numerator exceeds the degree of its denominator by 1 will have an oblique asymptote. In other words, if you look at the top and you say, hey, what is the highest power of x on top? Well, in that case, that would be a 3. And then you look down here on bottom and say, what's the highest power of x there? In this case, 2 this would be a scenario where you would have an oblique asymptote. In any other type of situation where the degree of the top is not one bigger than the denominator, you will never have the slant asymptote. This will be pretty clear why that's true in just a moment. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we go about doing this. Well, it says up here you're going to go back to your Algebra 2 class, and you're going to utilize an idea called polynomial long division. Yes, it's probably likely that I heard you moan and groan out there. Polynomial long division? Well, polynomial long division really isn't that difficult. Maybe the first time you learned it, it was a little tricky. But uh, at this point, you're in calculus. It shouldn't be something that worries you. And to be honest, it is a very important skill to learn because you'll use polynomial long division really for a variety of things, not just finding an oblique asymptote. But you'll find out later on that it'll be a very uh, viable way to uh, solve certain integration problems, for example. So let's take a look at polynomial long division. It's going to start off by writing what we call the dividend. That would be the polynomial that you would have in your numerator, in this case. And then the divisor would be the denominator. In this case, x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now, one thing that I like to do is, is look for what I call, or I refer to as ghost terms. Sometimes my students make fun of me when I say ghost terms. What's a ghost term? Well, a ghost term would be simply any term that would be missing due to uh, an exponent that's not there. In this case, we see that there is an x cubed term, there's an x squared term, an x term, and a constant term in our, on our dividend. So there's no need to put a, a zero term which I refer to, once again, as the ghost term. Likewise, with what's out in front of the divisor, everything seems to be there from the squared to the first power to the constant. All right, let's get ready to go with this, and we'll do our polynomial division. You remember what we like to do is we focus only on the first piece of the divisor, x squared, and we ask ourselves, what would we multiply x squared by to achieve a 3x cubed? Well, the answer to that, obviously, would be a 3 along with an x. 3x times x squared would be 3x cubed. Now, just like in normal long division with, with arithmetic, you would take this 3x that we've placed up here on top, 
and we would multiply it by every single piece of your divisor. So we would have 3x to the third minus 6x squared plus 3x. We just distribute that 3x right inside. And as with typical long division, we would subtract that quantity. Now you're going to have to be very careful here because you want to make sure that you distribute that negative to each term that we've uh, just written. So we have 3x cubed minus 3x cubed, which would be a 0. Negative 2x squared minus negative 6x squared would be a positive 4x squared. You're thinking negative 2 plus 6 there. And then x minus a 3x, of course, would be a negative 2x. And then in typical long division fashion, we would bring down that next term. In this case, it's our final term, the minus 4, the constant. And we would start the process all over again. Think about what do you multiply x squared by to give you a 4x squared? Well, pretty obviously, that is 4. And I don't want to say, hey, let's just stop. Let's just hang it up right now. But I want you to realize, for the sake of this particular problem, we are done. We don't really have to continue to see whether or not there's a remainder. But I want to go ahead and finish this nonetheless, just to make sure that we all understand the rightful conclusion of the long division. It won't take but just a second. We're going to distribute that 4 in. And once again, we will subtract. And we end up with positive 6x minus 8. Positive 6x minus 8. And you'll notice here that you can no longer do your polynomial long division because your leftover remnants of your division now contain only an x to the first power. And you can't really divide an x to the second power into that very nicely. So technically, your final result, your answer to this long division problem would be 3x plus 4 plus the remainder that we came up with, 6x minus 8, divided by what our divisor was. Now that is the rightful conclusion of polynomial long division. However, in this particular application, in the application of finding a slant or oblique asymptote, we are told down here that it is the non-remainder portion of our quotient that would be the expression for your lines equation. All that you would have to do is simply throw a y equal in front. So our non-remainder portion would be this guy right here, the 3x plus 4. And that should be our oblique asymptotes equation. You don't do much of anything with that remainder portion. Well, if we go back and, and we look at the graph that we had fashioned earlier for this, um, it's probably going to be very difficult to determine uh, that 3x uh, minus 4, y equals, I'm sorry, y equals 3x plus 4, is indeed the vertical, or the, uh, the oblique asymptote. You've got to get the right asymptote here. So what I've uh, thought about doing here is going ahead and graphing this on the uh, TI-inspire, just a scratch pad sketch here of the original function. I'm going to try to move this out of the way. And you're going to notice a lot of times in the default windows, uh, you're just not going to see what you want to see. Um, it's pretty clear that the oblique asymptote just doesn't really seem to want to show up on both branches of this graph. So all that we would have to do is change the um, boundaries a little bit. I'm going to experiment here. I'm going to make the upper boundary a 50. And I'll make this right boundary uh, at, actually, it looks pretty good there at 10. I think we can kind of see what's happening. Um, maybe I'll go ahead and change the uh, lower boundary here to something a little bit bigger. Well, um, I'm going to do a little scale change as well. I'll just do this here in the window. Let's make the uh, scale along the y-axis, uh, something a little bit bigger than 1, so we don't see all those tick marks. Something like 10 might work nicely. And I could have chosen um, to put grid lines in. That may or may not help here because of the, the, the crazy scale change. But 
I'm not really concerned about that. I'm really concerned about if I were to sketch y equals 3x plus 4, am I going to see a pretty good uh, replication of our work? Does it really seem to be an oblique asymptote? So I'm going to hit the tab button to call up my graph entry line. And then I'll just enter our long division result, 3x plus 4, all ready default set equal to y. That will show up in red here, and I think you guys can see a pretty good piece of evidence that this line does serve to be a nice oblique asymptote. Notice how the blue graph does seem to be hugging alongside the red line there as we approach the left or to the, towards the left. And I think we've got that same sort of behavior going on in the upper branch, too. The blue curve of approaching the red line very nicely. So there you have it. That's how you find an oblique asymptote. Hope this helps. Uh, the next lectures, we'll go ahead and go into the further analysis of section 3.6 on how to sketch one of these rational functions from scratch. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.